and welcome to the second episode of JTrip Plan. I'm Faye Kamu. And I'm Amy Ota. We bring you all sorts of handy travel information to help you plan your trip to Japan. Not just the popular tourist spots, but also attractions and sites around the country. We also introduce regional advice we receive from everyone and answer questions about travel in Japan. Let's have a look at the sweets on the table. Ta -da! Yes. So this is a spring favorite. Mm -hmm. It's called the uguisu mochi. Uguisu mochi. Mm -hmm. So and mochi, you remember, right. is uh, pound rice. Pound rice. And uguisu is a type of bird that's heard in throughout Japan. Right. Um, it's the bush warbler. And so if you look at this, yes. um, you see the powder on top. Mm -hmm. I initially thought it was green tea powder, but it's right. not. It's green pea powder. Green pea powder. And I think the color is because the actual uguisu, the bird, Bird mm -hmm. is this kind of color. Mmm. I love it. Do you? It's so sweet. Perfect dessert. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> this is really good. Mmm. Bush warbler. Mm -hmm. It sounds uh, something like this, right? <laughs> Let's see if I can do this properly here. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> I guess if you're coming to Japan, yep. you should enjoy your uguisu mochi. Right. And maybe listen to uguisu at the same time. Right, the real bird as opposed to mine. But <laughs> you can also go and buy one of these at the souvenir shop and enjoy your own uguisu version. Our theme today is stunning and amazing scenes. We asked you on our Facebook page for your amazing and uniquely Japanese scenes as well. So shall we take a look? Did we get a bunch? All right. Yes, we did. Okay. Our, uh, this first one is from Jose Ramos from New York. Right on. Thank you, Jose. Wow, super cute. Oh my gosh, it's a deer from? in a shop. Nara. Nara. Nara's uh, famous for his tears, yes. <laughs> He's window shopping. He's <laughs> cool. Okay, next one. Yes. And um, these pictures are from Fabrizio, uh, an Italian living in Tokyo, right. of the beaches of Yoron Island. Yes. Which is the southernmost island in Kagoshima Prefecture. Kagoshima Prefecture. Mm. Wonderful. So this is Yurigahama. Oh, look at that. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And it seems like the white sand beach appears only at low tide, mm. 1.5 kilometers off the shore. Right. So you can't always 100% get to see it. It mm. only comes, it, it's sort of a rare. Wow. Thank you for those photos. Excellent. This picture, this is a picture that I took, oh, by nice. the way. Okay. Yes, this is one uh, on my trip to Okino oh. Island. Okay, where's that? That is um, the northern part of Shimane Prefecture. Um, usually, you see these trees in shrines, wow. shrine areas. And what it is, is basically uh, Japanese Shinto believe that the deities or gods reside in all sorts of forms of nature. Yeah. And this tree has been around for 2,000 years. 2,000 years. 2,000 years. And therefore, obviously, they believe that there's got to be something special about this tree for it to have been around for 2,000 years. Wow, gorgeous. Yes. All right, and have I pictures? have a picture as you well. You do. <laughs> oh, look at that monkey. Hey, wrong one, wrong one. Oh, monkey. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so this is in Jigoku Dani in Nagano Prefecture. Yeah. And you can see these monkeys that come down into these hot springs mm -hmm. um, in the winter, usually, because right. it gets so cold. Mm -hmm. Around the time I went, there wasn't too much snow around. Yeah, right. I guess not at all, actually. Mm. But um, all these monkeys, because it's so cold, they come and enjoy these um, hot springs right here. This hot spring here is uh, man-made. Oh, yeah? But these monkeys are wild. Really popular yes. spot right now. So now let's take a look at this video of amazing and uniquely Japanese scenes. Oh, oh my gosh. So these are the Tori gates of Fushimi Inari Taisha. Wow. Yes, I've seen pictures of this, but I've never yes, actually I'm been. Right. This must be very surreal. With the green all around as well, mm. the nature around. Apparently this place is one of the top places foreign tourists want to go to. Really? Just to walk through these mm -hmm. Tori gates, yeah? And the deities of Fushimi Inari Taisha are worshipped for business prosperity and abundant crops. Ah! So this is Tojimbo in Fukui Prefecture. Yes. Wow. Wow. Incredible. So this faces the Japan Sea, mm -hmm. and there's a phenomenon called the columnar jointing. How tall are these places? Uh, I think about 25 meters high wow. for about one kilometer long. 
the stretch. Oh, so the stretch, one kilometer, 25 meters high. Yeah. Oh, my. That's right. Actually, mm -hmm. I've been here. Have you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, one day, one weekend, mm -hmm. my dad was like, we're going here! And so we all loaded up into the car. Yeah. And we went here. Really? How was it? It was amazing. Mm. But we obviously, we couldn't see it from the sky like this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, it's incredible. So make sure you add these popular spots to your next trip's itinerary, guys. For sure. And here's another in the Tohoku region sent by Doug in Sendai. Whoa, Ooh, nice. nice view. Beautiful. Hi, Thane. Hi, Amy. Hello. Hey. This is Doug up in Sendai, Miyagi Prefecture. I'm here today to recommend Yamadera, which is over in Yamagata Prefecture. Cool. Now, I like Yamadera because it's a great place to take a hike through some of Japan's natural beauty. Mm. Right. Now, Yamadera literally means mountain temple. It's actually about 30 temples that are spread across the side of a mountain. Mm. And uh, the area stretches about a square kilometer or so. Uh, now, next, let me tell you uh, about the uh, trekking course in Yamadera. Mm. It took me about an hour to on average. I've done it two times. Mm. It's pretty f easy to find on your way through town, uh, but they do have these signs, so you can just uh, follow the monk. Ah, the follow the monk. Uh, Come on. <laughs> easy to spot. Yeah, they also have uh, arrows and numbers telling you how far off you are in minutes. So next we have the start of the trail. Mm -hmm. From here, it's about a thousand steps to the last temple at the top. Mm, what you see in the distance here is the main hall. It enshrines Hote, the god of fortune. Mm. They say that if you stroke the part of his statue where you're ailing, you'll be healed. Ah, where well, you're ailing, I see. So if you got like, yeah. the headache, you want to stroke his head. If you got a right. knee, yeah. and you stroke his knee kind of thing, huh? That's right, yeah. A lot of people tend to touch their feet or knees uh, considering you're about to hike up a mountain. Okay, so after the main hall, you'll pass a shrine and then notice a gate leading into this forest that goes up the mountain. This to me is one of the best parts. It's so peaceful. It's lush in the spring and summer, and uh, the leaves in autumn are beautiful as well. Mm. Along the way, there are a bunch of these little stone Buddha statues and stone lanterns. Mm -hmm. right. uh, it gives the whole place a mystic kind of feel. Mm. Right about now, you might be feeling the burn in your legs a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. wow. wow, what is yeah. this? Oh my. Yeah, right? Huh. As you can see, it's well worth the climb. Uh, you can see these uh, little temples built into the rock wall in the back. Wow, yeah. And those buildings in the middle are actually just normal houses. People actually live up here. Oh, really? Just normally. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so moving along, go Daido, which is the best view in town. It's a pretty panoramic view and that'll leave you speechless. Yeah, those mountains are beautiful. Yeah. It's a hall that's towards the top of the mountain. The view is spectacular. Yeah. Wow. These pictures I took in February. Ah, so the snow. Yeah. Mm. I recommend that uh, you get a snack before you go because uh, there aren't any vending machines or any kind of vendors up on the top. Uh, so what I did was I stopped by the same shop and got some chikara konyaku. Wow. So this is basically just uh, balls of konyaku on a skewer. Uh huh and uh, then boiled in soy sauce. So if you like the taste of soy, then I think you'll like these. Very, very Incredible. cool. Incredible. Oh, Aw, that's lovely. And usually these places are, are situated in areas that are serene, yeah. you know, by surrounded by nature. So where the monks, I guess, could meditate mm -hmm. and basically take it all in, yeah? Yeah, it's a great place to go to relax, mm. you know, while exercising. All righty. Thanks. Great. Thanks a lot, Thanks Doug. so much. Bye. bye. All right, bye. <laughs> Now we come to the main part of the program where we highlight a single region so you can travel Japan like an expert. On this trip, we go view an industrial nightscape. Yes, they've become a popular tourist spot in Japan in recent years. First of all, let's take a look at this picture. Wow. wow. <laughs> it looks like it's from a sci-fi movie. Oh my goodness, I wow. wasn't expecting this. 
And it's not really that difficult, apparently, to uh, to visit these industrial zones as people might imagine. Right. And then try to actually get to see these night scenes. Well, on this trip, we head just outside of Osaka to Amagasaki oh in Hyogo Prefecture, mm. which is relatively unknown yet, mm. to see the industrial nightscape. Good morning. I'm here at Hanshin Umeda Station, getting ready to go to Amagasaki today, where I've heard the industrial night scene is spectacular. So I'm really looking forward to going and seeing it and whatever else Amagasaki has to offer. I take the Hanshin Railway from Umeda, a major station in Osaka. Here we go. Amagasaki is just west of Osaka on the way to Kobe. Wow. Oh, look at all those smokestacks over there. Incredible. It's really like different kind of scenery from even just a few seconds ago. This thriving industrial city has many paper and steel factories. Oh my gosh, we're already here. It was really only seven minutes. I can't believe how quick it was. It's still a bit early for me to view the nightscape, so I decide to take a walk around. Okay, so here we are in front of a Japanese shotengai or shopping arcade, and they're a really good way to get to know a new city or town. The friendly and lively shotengai is lined with stores selling groceries and daily necessities, entertainment facilities, and eateries, which all play a vital role in daily life. What's this? This is really interesting. So, this is a tori, which is usually outside of Shinto shrines. But uh, this one is a little unusual. Usually they're red. This is bright yellow, and it's hanging from the ceiling of the shopping arcade. The torii was hung to cheer on the local baseball team to series victory. Their home ground is nearby, and the locals are obviously huge supporters. I see something really interesting. Do you see these tiger backpacks? インパクトが半端じゃないですよね。インパクトがあってこのお値段なんでかなりお買い得やと思います。へえ。やっぱり阪神ファンの方が甲子園に持っていくのに買いに来られたりはしますけど。Okay, so if you're a baseball fan, this is perhaps the item to pick up for your uh, next baseball game. Oh, something smells really good. I'm pretty sure this is what smells so good. They're frying something? This shop, which opened more than 160 years ago, specializes in deep fried fish paste. It can be plain or have squid, ginger, and other ingredients mixed into the paste. I tried the gobo tempura. Fresh out of the cooker. Mm. You can see there's the fish paste, and then inside is a stick of burdock root called gobo in Japanese. This is unbelievable. So there's this incredible umami from the fish paste. This ramen shop's just celebrated its centennial. Konnichiwa. It may be the oldest operating ramen shop in Japan. They squash the dough with their feet so the egg noodles will be firm. The soup's secret base is a century-old soy sauce master stock to which they add a chicken pork belly broth. This is a recipe that has been handed down for generations, so you know it's good. And even just the flavor has seeped into the noodles, and each one is just full and juicy and plump with delicious pork broth. 100 years of history makes an incredible bowl of ramen. I find a real gem tucked away in one of the smaller arcades. Oh, cool movie posters. Wait, what is this? Is this a toy shop? 
にちは。はい。すごーい。いっぱいあるでしょう。いっぱいいっぱいいっぱい。いろいろと。My brother really really loves Godzilla films. He keeps he collects a bunch of these toys and actually keeps them on his desk. なんでこの店を作りましたか。Not many people come down here, so I opened this to bring life back to this section. He also stocks old postcards of Japanese beauties and woodblock printed scenery. The scenes of Amagasaki's industrial zone and canals go back about 50 years. Some scenes you can apparently still see today. The way it's just lined up and the beauty of the factories in the postcards. Really, it is something beautiful. I'm back on the main arcade, almost at the end. Oh, uh, I wonder, wonder if there's a show going on. This is really incredible. This is totally different. Like, I've been to Kabuki before and Bunraku, the traditional puppet theater. This is a very different feeling. This is much less formal. So I'm here in the theater, and it, as you can see, it's a very sort of intimate affair. There's about 20 people here. First on the program is a dance with audience participation. <laughs> Next is Taishu Engeki. <laughs> Taishu Engeki is vaudeville like theater for the working class at affordable prices. It's all in Japanese, but it's easy to understand through the acting. This beautiful actor is actually a female impersonator. Uh, the atmosphere is really fun and really interactive. I saw the audience members clapping, so I tried to join in, but I can see how it would be easy to become a fan. <laughs> They're so charming. Late afternoon, and it's time to go to the levee for the part of the trip I came here for. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. I finally can understand, like, industrial beauty. And such a short distance away, we have this mysteriously beautiful, you know. In the twilight, the factory stands proud against the red skies. The steam adds a unique dimension as it rises changing shape in the breeze. An hour after sunset and the sky darkens and the factory lights switch on, the scene looked menacing yet alluring. So I go for a closer look. Wow, it's really spectacular. You can get a close-up view from the public pedestrian path along the canal. The incredible shadows on all the pipes and it makes them gleam with these really interesting serpentine shapes. This paper factory manufactures cartons. The steam rising, the pipes crisscrossing each other, and the tanks dotting the floor. They loom in the darkness. It's powerful. It is fascinating from any angle. I feel like I'm in the setting of a steampunk movie. <laughs> like I don't know what's going to jump out at me. I can imagine someone who really enjoys photography coming here. It'd be a great setting for a fashion shoot or something too. Wow. Wow. That was Pretty amazing. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know you could approach it so closely yeah, and just, and you know, walk, walk around. around and Take pictures. Take pictures yeah. and just kind of get in, in, immersed into that whole that whole scene. Kind of different world. Right? Yeah. And all the lights and everything. Mm -hmm. I've seen it um, before it became popular on the yeah. way home from airports or whatnot as you pass these industrial sites. I think they have the lights on to begin with for safety purposes uh, anyways. Ah, I see. And also the Shotengai. Shotengai. That, right? that was very, very fun. Yeah, now I used to go through a Shotengai mm -hmm. uh, when I was you know, growing up mm -hmm. after school. Mm -hmm. Although I wouldn't buy anything necessarily, mm -hmm. the people in the shops would like wave at me and say, uh -huh. Oh, hi! 
Like, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, once how's you it become going? a local there. Yeah, they, they know you. Very friendly, so it's very, you know? very like, homey atmosphere. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And today we are spotlighting Amagasaki's factory nightscape. Mm-hmm. And there's, of course, more. Right. Uh, Megan spent another day checking out some other spots. The Amagasaki factory nightscape is so beautiful, it's captivating. I go to explore more the next day, but before that, I wanted to check out the serene Teramachi area. In the early 1600s, the local lord gathered Buddhist temples to this area when he built his castle. Each of the 13 temples remaining today is a treasure in its own way. There's also a shrine. It's huge. I don't know if you can give any kind of scale here, but it's pretty big. It's 17 meters tall, and the cross beam's 22 meters long. This remarkable tori is an Amagasaki landmark. Behind it stands Amagasaki Ebisu Jinja. Hello. Ah, hello. Hi. Welcome to Ebisu Shrine. Ebisu, and, yes. and uh, what is that the god to? Uh, Ebisu deity is um, uh, good for fishermen and uh, financial success. I pray to Ibisu and then draw a fortune that comes with a good luck charm. I'm really superstitious, guys. Here we go. What did I get? Let's see. Mm-hmm. Ah, ah, this is Kozuchi. Golden hammer of some Yes. Kind. Financial success. It's always good to have luck with money. And my fortune is... Ah, ah, this is a small happiness. small happiness. That's okay. Better than no luck. Better than no luck. <laughs> its proximity to the sea was probably one reason why Amagasaki thrived. The seas were reclaimed and canals dug, enabling goods to be freighted by boat. I joined a canal tour to see the factories by day. This cruise is organized by a local community group. Everyone, please turn your attention ahead of us. This is so cool. This scene is actually peculiar to Amagasaki and its canals. Boats dock right beside the factory lots to load and unload the freight. This factory is one of only two in the world that manufactures special pipes used in power plants and oil fields. The canal cruise gives you a behind-the-scenes look at Amagasaki's unique factory scape. You can spend a full day sightseeing around the industrial zone from land and sea, day and night. We've got a a samurai factory over here. It's got one of the top knots on top. (laughs) It's like being a little kid and for the first time discovering how something works. It's like discovering the mysteries of the world. (laughs) Now for a few industrial night views. I got some advice on some of the best spots in Amagasaki. Professional cameraman Tetsuro Kobayashi is an Amagasaki resident. Drawn to the factory nightscape, he's photographed industrial scenes around the country. Together with Amagasaki City Hall, he organizes tours guiding participants to the best spots and giving photographic advice. He first takes us to a bridge. One point is having the canal in the foreground. The factory lights are beautifully reflected on the water's surface. You have the mountains in the background and the city of Amagasaki below it. So you have the added joy of combining the city and factory scapes. Five minutes walk away. There's a coke and chemical factory that faces the sidewalk. Here, you have a huge tank, as you can see in the middle. 
with whitish lights on this side and orange lights on the other, creating contrasting atmospheres. Together they make an interesting photo. For an industrial town, the factories in Amagasaki are not that big, and this allows you to get up close and take photos. It's a big plus. Other cities don't have this kind of attraction. I visit one of the factories he mentioned. Oh. Can you hear that sound? It's so close. <laughs> Howlings and whistlings. Even though you can't see anybody else around, it's like some kind of strange animal. The layout of the pipes and the way they're lit up is magnificent. It's a great factory for taking dramatic shots. Well, just a short seven minutes away from Osaka and I've discovered a whole new world. Everything from a traditional temple to these incredible factories. I didn't really know what to expect from Amagasaki, but I got to discover a marvelous little slice of life in Japan. I can't recommend it enough for you all, too. That was like a zombie might come out uh, suddenly. <laughs> something, something extraterrestrial zombie. Yeah. <laughs> so in this episode, we talked about the industrial nightscape of Amagasaki, mm -hmm. but there are actually other areas in Japan mm -hmm. where you can visit to see the factories at night as well. Mm -hmm. And there are even tours. Wow. So they explain about the factories mm -hmm. and, and how everything works, I guess. Right. So here are some of the other factories you can visit. Wow. Uh, this one's on the border of Tokyo and Kawasaki. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness. Look at that. Yeah, those colors are very cool. Gee whiz. Wow. Where and is this? Oh, wow. This one's in Fukuoka. Fukuoka. Wow. Now that's a different planet. Yeah. Together, yeah? It looks like an amusement park that's been abandoned but lit up. <laughs> 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 and apparently there are boat tours as well, so you oh, can so you see can it from the water. The water as mm -hmm. well. Wow. Very yeah. nice. So if all of you out there have any information on industrial nightscapes and tours, please send us a message on Facebook. We'll feature them hopefully in the future episodes. We want to provide you with itinerary suggestions and information to suit your travel needs. And to do that, we need your help. We'd love to hear your questions and recommendations on sightseeing spots and experiences and interesting information on our page. And we'll have another fascinating trip for you next time. See you. Bye. Bye.